Sometimes I'm not sure what the guys over at Casio are thinking. It seems like every other brand has been increasing prices and has been very careful not to create super cheap, affordable watches that compete with their higher end models and trying to convince people to upgrade and to pay more for things like sapphire crystals or sign crowns or things that you would expect would be standard. But on the opposite end of that spectrum, Casio seems to be doing the opposite. Today we're taking a look at yet another G-Shock killer made by Casio themselves. It doesn't seem like it makes great business sense for Casio, but it's definitely a win for anybody who's looking for a great, super cheap, affordable watch. Today we're checking out the Casio DW291H. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name is Dave, I live in Japan and I love to collect affordable watches. And here in Japan, Casio is probably the most popular watch brand that I see. I see a lot of Seikos, I even see a lot more Orients here than I did back in the States. But more than any of those, I see people wearing super cheap Casio watches. And when it comes to their digital options, they have so many great watches available. And at the top end of their digital line has to be the G-Shock models. These are just the most tough and rugged watches on the planet. They have a distinct utilitarian look to them. They're totally waterproof and they offer a ton of useful functions. And you can get all of that G-Shock goodness packed into the DW5600 all for around $50 but you can actually get most of those same things also in the DW291 for around $30. This is a watch with 200 meters of water resistance, a mineral crystal, really useful functions like a stopwatch, perpetual calendar, LED light, timer, and even a GMT function. And with features like that and a cost that's 40% lower than the cheapest G-Shock, it kind of makes you wonder if you even really need a G-Shock. Is this watch really a G-Shock killer? I think you can make a case for it. Let's take a closer look and see if we can figure that out. So why am I referring to this watch as a G-Shock killer? Well, it's because you're getting a watch from Casio that looks like it could be from the G-Shock line stylistically and functionally has a lot of the same characteristics that people look for in a G-Shock. But Casio is offering this one at $30, which is about 40% cheaper than the cheapest G-Shock. So that's the context I wanna keep in mind as we're looking at the functions and features of this watch. I wanna kind of be comparing it to the Casio G-Shock DW5600, because I think a lot of people are gonna say, well, you can get this watch for $30, but for only $20 more at around $50, you can pick up an actual G-Shock. So is it really worth saving the $20 to get this one? Now in this price range, $20 is actually a lot of money. Again, we're talking about a 40% difference in cost. But cost aside, this cheap watch from Casio actually has a few advantages over the DW5600, which we'll also get into in this review. But to get things rolling, let's start by talking about some of the features that this watch has that people typically look to the G-Shock line to get. Obviously, this is a big, durable digital watch with a ton of features built into the movement. But more specifically, this watch has a full 200 meters of water resistance. And for the vast majority of people, the most common way that their watch is going to get damaged is with water. And 200 meters of water resistance is a level of water resistance that is typically reserved for dive watches for people who are doing scuba diving. And it's the exact same water resistance rating that Casio gives to their G-Shock line, which basically means that this watch is just as waterproof as a G-Shock. Another feature that is not typically found in digital watches from Casio in this price range is that it has a mineral crystal rather than a plastic crystal that's going to make it much more more scratch resistant. And again, this is typically the same crystal that you're gonna find on the G-Shock. So to get a digital watch for 30 bucks from Casio with a mineral crystal and with that level of water resistance is kind of unheard of. And it's the kind of thing that probably drives a lot of business executives crazy because you would think that Casio's kind of cannibalizing their own market here. Like when you think of Seiko, they absolutely refuse to put a sapphire crystal on any of their lower priced watches to kind of make people look at their higher priced ones to get that feature that everybody wants. But here Casio is doing the opposite by giving you that water resistance and that mineral crystal on a much cheaper watch than they would normally offer those features in. And to top it all up, this watch looks like it belongs in the G-Shock line. It's a big, beefy, digital watch. It has that same rugged aesthetic that the G-Shocks have, 
And I think most people would do a double take if you told them this watch wasn't a G-Shock. They'd have to look closely and see that it doesn't have the G-Shock moniker on there. Because stylistically, it has a lot of the same design cues that the G-Shocks have. And there's one other reason why I think this watch could be called a G-Shock killer, and that's because of the more modern module that's inside of it. The entry-level G-Shock, the DW5600, has been out for a while now, and the module inside is a little bit dated. And one of the main features that it lacks is a world time functionality, and the $30 DW291 does have world time. And for me personally, a dual time watch is one of the best features on a watch. A lot of my friends live in other time zones, so it's always great to be able to quickly tell what time it is for them if I'm looking to contact them. And another benefit to this newer module is that I think it has better clarity and contrast than the module in the DW5600. It also helps that because this is a larger watch, it has a larger screen, which also increases the legibility. We'll get into that more in a minute, but just the boost to contrast and clarity is a really nice bonus compared to the DW5600. So there's a lot of ways where this watch is on par with the DW5600. There's some ways where it's even a little bit ahead. And for price wise, you're looking at 40% cheaper than the cheapest G-Shock. So on a budget, this watch is looking pretty awesome, but obviously that's not the whole story. There's gonna be some areas where this watch is not as good as a G-Shock. So let's jump into that with the most obvious one. This one doesn't have the G-Shock shock resistance that the G-Shocks have, which a lot of people would say is the whole point of the G-Shock line. That's what the name G-Shock refers to. The original idea is that Casio wanted to produce a watch that wouldn't break if you dropped it, even from a significant height. So the G-Shock watches have a ton of engineering going into them to make them very tough. They have been tested to ensure that they can survive a drop from almost any angle from a significant height. So you get things like recessed buttons and a bezel that tends to rise up above the crystal to give it an added level of protection and a strap design that prevents the watch from falling flat on its back, which is one of the most vulnerable parts of the movement to shock damage. And this $30 DW291 doesn't have a lot of those features. It does have the same strap design, so the watch can't fall flat on its back, but the buttons are much more exposed, and so if the watch lands directly on one of those buttons, it can give a shock to the movement. Likewise, the crystal is flush with the case. The case doesn't rise up above the crystal, so if it falls directly on the crystal on a rock or something, there is a likelihood that that could get shattered. So when it comes to pure toughness, the G-Shock, even the cheapest G-Shock, is going to be much more durable. But when you're talking about Casio watches, to say that a G-Shock is much more durable than the DW290, I think that's kind of like saying a tank is a lot more durable than a Humvee. The vast majority of people don't need a watch as durable as a G-Shock. For most people, the DW291 is going to be as durable as you need for anything you're going to throw at it, and it's going to be far more durable than almost any other watch out there not made by Casio. Now, there's still one other area where I think this watch falls behind the DW5600, and that's when it comes to the backlight. The DW291 features a dual LED backlight rather than the cool full-screen electroluminescent backlight that the G-Shocks have. And this is an area that Casio has been kind of regressing on. They used to put this in a lot more of their watches, but I think to save on cost, on a lot of their newer ones, they've gone to these dual LED displays with sometimes mixed results. In this case, it is fully functional. It does light the face of the watch up well enough that you can easily read it in the dark, but not as easily as the full screen electroluminescent display. And it certainly doesn't look as cool as having the entire screen itself glowing behind to backlight it. So not so much of a functionality drop here as a style drop, but again, to price this watch at 30 bucks, you gotta cut some corners somewhere. So I think those are the main objective differences between the two watches, the two areas where one is clearly better than the other, but there's also a number of stylistic and subjective choices here that we also need to talk about. The first is when it comes to size. The DW291 is a much larger watch than the DW5600, and that's going to be, for some people, a problem, and for others, that might be a reason to buy the bigger watch. It's largely going to be down to personal preference. Now, because both of these are resin-based watches from Casio, they are both extremely comfortable on the wrist. Even though the DW291 is so large, it still wears a lot better than most mechanical or automatic watches. Specifically, the DW291 comes in at 47 millimeters across compared with the G-Shock DW5600's 43 millimeters across. The 291 is 14 millimeters tall versus the G-Shock's 12 millimeters tall. 
but that size difference also translates into a larger screen on the DW291, the cheaper watch, which again increases the legibility significantly. The screen on the DW291 is 24 millimeters across versus the G-Shock's 20 millimeters. So if you want a bigger, easier to read display, the DW291 is the better way to go. But if you want a smaller, less obtrusive watch, then go with the G-Shock DW5600. Another major difference between these two watches is the accessibility of the buttons. In order to protect the movement, the DW5600 has recessed buttons that are actually very difficult to press, and that's partially by design. It's so that a rock doesn't hit those buttons and then cause a shock to the movement inside. But the consequence is you often have to kind of really dig your fingertips in there, and if you're wearing gloves in the wintertime, you can kind of forget about actually accessing the functions on this watch. By contrast, the DW291 has very big, very easy to press buttons. In fact, you can kind of see them kind of sticking out on the side of the case, making them even easier to access. This can be a downside sometimes because if you bump into things, then the watch can kind of change screens on its own. But if you're looking to use this watch in the cold weather when you're wearing gloves, you're gonna have a much easier time doing that. So as a winter sports watch, I think the DW291 actually has the DW5600 beat pretty handily here in that regard because you're still getting the perfect water resistance that you need. You're gonna have no problem taking this in the snow. It's gonna be pretty durable, but you can also still use the buttons even if you've got gloves on your hands. And all that makes this a pretty great watch for $30. And I think for a lot of people, it's gonna be exactly the kind of watch they're looking for. It's obviously a very casual, very sports oriented watch. It's not gonna be a great stylistic watch. But when it comes to pure functionality for the price, this is one of the best values out there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the review for today. Let me know what you think down below. Is this watch a G-Shock killer? Would you save the $20 to get this one versus the DW5600? Or is that shock protection really important to you? And if so, why? Be curious to see your guys' thoughts down below. And another option is to get a Casio-themed t-shirt like this one, which I'm selling over on my website at justthewatch.com. Do me a favor and check that out. And if you like Casios and other affordable watches and haven't subscribed to my channel yet, invite you to do so. These are the types of watches that I like to cover on the channel, really looking for anything that would be appealing to people who are trying to build a watch collection on an affordable budget. I cover a lot of Japanese brands because I live here in Japan, but also do a lot of micro brands and pretty much anything else that I think is interesting. Anyways, that'll do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.